Am I the a-hole for calling my father-in-law a bastard after he pressured us into getting a paternity test? In my husband's family, you inherit from your grandparents. My husband's father got into his head that our son was the product of me having an affair. He said that he would not set aside money for him unless we got a paternity test. My husband told his father to go screw himself and we cut him off. It has been a couple of years now and he wants back into our lives, but he still wanted a paternity test. My husband and I talked about it, and we agreed under the condition that when it turned out that my husband was the father, the money for our son would be in an irrevocable trust for his future, even though obviously his grandfather has not passed away. He agreed, and we did a test sort of like 23andMe but more reputable and private. It just so happens that my son is indeed my husband's child, but he is not related to a bunch of his paternal relatives. My husband's mom is a saint, and she divorced her jack's ex a long time ago. Father-in-law immediately started crapping on her for cheating, since obviously the tests show that my husband was illegitimate. Two tests later, and the results are back and my father-in-law is definitely my husband's father. My father-in-law, however, is not the offspring of the man he always thought was his dad. We had a legally binding contract, so my son has inheritance waiting for him when he turns 25. We saw my father-in-law over the holidays, and he was complaining about how he had to liquefy some of his assets to set up the trust fund. I said that if he had just accepted his grandson and had it been such a bastard about it, then we would all have been happier. He got very quiet and very angry. He said I was being very rude to insult him like that. I said that he had been rude to insinuate that I was cheating on my husband, and that technically he was indeed a bastard. He is furious with me, and mad at my husband for letting me talk about him that way. My husband told him that he brought this all on himself, and that if he wants to be in our lives, he will treat us all with respect. He followed up that since we have the money now, there is nothing he can hold over us if we choose to kick him back out. We are hearing a lot from relatives of my husband. Some good, some bad. Overall, they think I need to be more polite, but they agree he did this to himself. Now for the top comments. And that technically he was indeed a bastard. LMAO. Sheesh, what a story. Let us know if he finds out who his bio dad was. Not the a-hole. Plot twist? It was to help. Screw their polite. He wasn't polite when he basically called you a loose woman. Now that your son's trust is set up, you should give him as much respect as he has given you. And go no contact, because he's a great age ex. So he barges into your lives demanding a paternity test, accuses you of cheating, but you need to be more polite? I think the heck not. You're not the a-hole, and your father-in-law needs an attitude adjustment. Not sure why I'd want to continue tolerating somebody like that in your lives, but congrats on a free trust fund. Yep. I'm sick of this mentality where people are supposed to be polite to the person who have utterly trashed and disrespected them. That's complete and utter BS, and anyone who dared to suggest that to me would get a solid telling off. Be the better slash bigger person equals get back on the floor, doormat. As long as the abusive person has a preferred target, nobody else has to deal with a mess. Opie and her dear husband aren't playing doormat. Good for them. Father-in-law wanted to play stupid games and won a stupid prize. Turns out, he is the illegitimate one in the family. I find that hilarious. Not the a-hole. All parties agreed to the terms. Don't dish out if you can't take it. Father-in-law is lucky you let him back into your lives. So as long as everyone is respectful, then there should be no further issues. Mean words? Yes. Warranted? Absolutely. Next story. My ex left me the majority of his estate amounting to $700,000, and his parents demand that I leave it to his wife and child. My ex and I were together for almost 20 years. We never got married because it never felt necessary and we were child-free. I had problems with birth control, so he chose vasectomy. I found out that he cheated on me three years ago and I left him. He got with his affair partner. Six months later, I heard that they were married. I found out that I was pregnant with my current boyfriend a year into dating and even though we still weren't there in the relationship, we thought that we could make it happen. And sure enough, we are very happy and we love our little family very much. My ex kept texting me on occasions like birthdays and holidays, which I never answered, but when he heard about my daughter, he sent me a lengthy and hurtful text about me cheating on him, and he never texted me again. I never answered. A few months later, my ex ended his life. This was about four months ago. His wife is apparently giving birth any time now. I was surprised. I was contacted by a solicitor to tell me that I have inherited my ex's estate. He had left everything to me, besides some to his parents' pension and his nephew. I got a letter from him apologizing for what he did and saying that he loved me and wished me and my family happiness and he wanted to help with that. Now, his wife and parents are very angry and demand that I leave them everything. I don't know. 
Would I be the a-hole if I kept it because that is what I want actually and what he wanted? 1. Hire a lawyer 2. Get lawyer to take care of the details 3. Don't spend this money as any and all money from the estate to them should have been taken care of by probate but they may contest the will 4. You are not obligated to give any of that money back unless ordered by the court He had liquidated all his assets before he was gone sold his house etc everything is liquid assets it sounds like he knew he'd been cheated on. As others have said, get a lawyer any paternity test before you make any decisions. If you do decide to give the child any money, do so via a trust. Being that he married a fair partner, they may be in a place with presumptive paternity. Regardless, getting a legal professional to represent her interests is a must. Presumptive paternity doesn't mean Opie can't request they prove actual paternity in order to voluntarily gift some of her new money to the kid, especially since he got a vasectomy flip the script. They would give you nothing. Up to you if you want to keep it or ration it out. People get really weird about inheritance money and will actually destroy their own families over jealousy and as such. If Opie decides to ration something out, only through a lawyer. In fact, all communication with the other party should be handled through a lawyer. We'll avoid a lot of nastiness that way. In case anyone reads this and actually tries it, don't be surprised when people refuse to talk to your lawyer. They want to put pressure on you not your lawyer. I'm just saying, it might seem on Reddit like a mic drop conversation ender, but it is not. In addition to telling them to talk to your lawyer, you also have to have the discipline to never take the bait when they're calling. Don't pick up. Don't text back. Don't email back. They will say anything to get you to reply. Anything. People with this energy have energy for it every goddamn day. That means you have to have that nope energy every day too. You can block them in all socials and all channels, but they'll find other channels. Document all the crazy, but also don't be surprised when a judge doesn't care. Everyone is crazy to them, including you. The court most likely won't put someone in jail for what the other party is doing, even though it's abuse, potential contempt, slash harassment, etc. They'll just let you suffer it. Sorry it's like this. Been through it a few times. If people refuse to talk to your lawyer and continue to harass you, you can get a restraining order and make sure everything is documented through your lawyer. There are very clear measures to keep you above board, even if they keep sinking lower. If they don't talk through your lawyer, they don't get what they want. They may keep at it, but as long as you toe the line, there's nothing they can do about it. Next story. Am I the a-hole? My wife won't allow my 14-year-old to speak to her half-siblings and my parents, her grandparents. I have been married since 2007 to my second wife. When we met, I had three children from a previous marriage who at a time were nine female and five-year-old twins, son and daughter. Initially, my wife and kids get along well, but when we had our own daughter together, now 14, her attitude changed dramatically as she played extreme favoritism. In 2017, my wife convinced me to move to another state, and my agreement with her was that I would continue to see my kids on a regular basis. But this turns out to be only a few times per year. Our daughter was prohibited communicating with her half-siblings and my parents, only on my side, but it is permitted with my wife's two older children. I have started to put my foot down that I want to take my daughter to see her older half-siblings and get to know her grandparents as they are getting up in years. My wife is insisting that such meetings cannot happen without her. My parents and older children are not ready to just accept my wife back into their lives, as there is a lot of relationship repair that needs to happen first. Am I the a-hole for insisting that my wife stays home and that my daughter should be able to see her family? P.S. My eldest has a wedding planned for the summer, and my wife wants to go, but my eldest doesn't want her there as they haven't even spoken in 11 years, and a relationship was very hostile prior to that. My wife and I just started some couples therapy this week. Now for the top comments. Everyone sucks here. You know exactly why your wife is. But why the heck aren't you prioritizing your children? All of them. Why are you asking your wife's permission for your children to see you and each other? You just passively moved away from your children because your wife wanted to? You've just accepted her treating your kids like crap for 14 years. It only seemed to care enough to think about maybe possibly doing something about it now that it's clearly affecting the kid you have with her too. Your other children are already adults aged 19 to 23 and they got there without you. This, this is essentially what happened with my dad slash stepmom and my step slash half siblings. It's better now, but it still hurts. Parents have to advocate for their kids, and they can't let their partner dictate their relationship with them. Same, though my dad and his new wife are child-free. To go from being the center of a parent's world to being kicked off to the side then completely ignored except for attacks and holidays hurts. 
It feels like the parents wanted a do-over with a new family. I'm honestly surprised OP's kids invited him to the wedding. I definitely wouldn't have. I guess there is some communication between him and them. Everyone sucks here. Your wife is a huge a-hole for alienating your kids and not allowing her child to know her siblings. You are an a-hole for allowing this. You have major damage to repair that is going to take time. If you continue to allow your wife to make rules regarding your children, you will lose those relationships altogether. I hope you're being honest with your couple's therapist and not sugarcoating this. Yeah, he's basically letting her steamroll their whole childhood experience in their family unit. She has extreme control issues and he doesn't even seem to be fighting back for his own family. This would literally divorce worthy for me if I had a partner trying to force literally any of this. No offense, but why the hell did you allow this to go on for so long? This is not okay. Your wife is an a-hole. Only thing we can say on this sub and your kids deserve better than this woman. However, you are also the a-hole for allowing this to continue. No wonder why your wife isn't allowed at the wedding. Everyone sucks here. Because he thought with this man parts and basically abandoned his kids with his first wife. Honestly, if that was his kid, I wouldn't even talk to him. Last story. Am I the a-hole for publicly announcing that my aunt tried to use me as a child to get back at my mom? I-19 female looked just like my late maternal grandmother. She died when my mom was only a child, but she died leaving her husband and oldest daughter deeply traumatized by her behavior and her death. Her younger daughter, my aunt, was too young to remember her or anything about the life she gave her family. My grandmother did a lot of things that left their mark on the family, and my mom especially. To add to everything else, my mom is the one who found her mother at just 8 years old. So, she has always carried that around with her. I only found out I looked just like her mother when I was 6, and my aunt told me I was just like her mommy, and she was showing me all these photos she had, and a childhood once really showed a resemblance. My aunt made a big point to tell me every single similarity we had. My mom never ever made me feel like I wasn't loved or like there was something wrong with me. The only reason I knew something was up was she wasn't able to hide a sadness in her eyes when she looked at me. I also did some snooping when I was little and heard her tell my dad about the struggle she had some days to see her mom's face in me. My aunt decided to use me to hurt my mom. When I was 12, she brought me to get my hair dyed behind my mom's back and pushed me to go blonde when I wanted pink hair. Turned out, my mom knew their mother is a blonde. I realized that when I saw my mom's eyes after seeing me with blonde hair. That was the point where I realized what my aunt was doing. There was other stuff before then, like she'd buy me clothes that were similar to what their mother would have worn. My aunt had a bunch of photos of her mother, so she knew the stuff she liked to wear. She gave me a nickname as a little girl and got me so into it I tried to use it with everyone. It was a nickname my grandmother was given by some people in her life. My mom really hated that name too. I heard her tell dad later that night. My mom adored my aunt and thought they were super close. So when I did realize what my aunt was doing, I made sure to tell her I was onto her and wouldn't be trusting her anymore. She did attempt to do some more messed up stuff, but eventually I told my dad, and he told my aunt to leave me the heck alone. We didn't see her for years during COVID or after, but then grandpa's birthday happened just before New Year's, and she approached me and tried to manipulate me into doing the same stuff, changed my hair and how I dress, etc. I told her I knew what she was doing and laughed at the idea of it being to hurt mom. So, I lost my temper and made sure everyone heard what she had done when I was a kid and that she was trying to do it again. My dad and some other people there forced my aunt to leave, but not before she told me I was such a witch for spoiling the party and publicly humiliating her. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. We need to normalize shaming people who try to manipulate people to hurt others. Also, social media is a good way to get the truth out. Cutting horrible people out of one's lives should also be normalized. Ant's behavior is heartless to put it lightly, and absolutely psychotic to put it honestly. My ex has people like this, and her entire family acted like it didn't happen. If you had a sexual predator in the family, you'd tell everyone so they could not violate children and mess them up for life. Emotional and mental assault. I want to elevate it from abuse to what it truly is. Assault is equally predatory and violating. You're still messing that child up, and if that graphic description makes it real to you, then understand that happened to my children before I was able to finally protect them. Your aunt may have inherited your grandma's mental health issues. You were right to protect yourself and your family by outing her. Shaming these horrible people out of a family and out of the public square needs to be a thing. She is the bee and an a-hole. You are protecting the next little girl or boy that predator tried mentally damage. You are a saint. You keep doing you. Props to you and your dad and family for backing you up and protecting the kids and family rather than the family name. Wish my ex has had that much class. As a dad has had to fix his kids, thank you. Not the a-hole. 
You got your grandmother's looks, but it seems your aunt got her personality. Quite the achievement, since she never knew her. Just tell her you were doing what she wanted and giving her a taste of grandma. If she was publicly humiliated by everyone knowing about her cruel little game, then it's probably time she looked in a mirror or went to a therapist for whatever messed up childhood resentment she holds against her mom. Or don't bother, she obviously lives for the drama. Go back to ignoring her existence. It will probably annoy her more than any